Uh, we're going to come back and keep an eye, of course, on events in Ukraine. But we're going to take a look now at some other stories. We're actually going to head to the US. We're going to head to California, where Apple has been announcing its newest products, including uh, something quite new. It's called Apple Vision Pro. Take a look at this. With Vision Pro, you're no longer limited by a display. Your surroundings become an infinite canvas. Use your apps anywhere and make them any size you want. Capture photos and videos and relive your most important memories in an entirely new way. Watch your movies, shows, and sports and immerse yourself in games on a giant screen surrounded by spatial audio and connect with people as if you're sharing the same space. So in the same way that Mac introduced us to personal computing and iPhone introduced us to mobile computing, Apple Vision Pro will introduce us to spatial computing. So there you have it. I'm afraid I don't quite know what to make of it, uh, but I'm not the technology expert. Thankfully, we have one. Our technology editor, Zoe Kleiman, talk us through your reaction to this. Well, here I am. You can just see behind me Apple's HQ here in Cupertino. It's called Apple Park. And we have just heard uh, what Apple boss Tim Cook hopes is going to be a future direction for Apple, a very transformative moment. He and other people have compared it to the moment that the iPhone was unveiled. Now, we're going to have to wait and see whether that is actually the case. What I can tell you is this is an AR headset. That means it's augmented reality and mixed reality. You put it on over your head and you can see apps. You can watch TV. There was a lot about you using FaceTime, video calling your friends, but with this um, augmented experience, if you like, this kind of extra experience of seeing it large on a screen in front of you while still being able to see wherever you are in the home behind you. Let me tell you about the price tag because it's even more eye-watering than we thought it was going to be. It's three and a half thousand dollars, which is nearly 3,000 pounds. It will be out in the US uh, at the beginning of next year, but it's interesting to see who's a fan of this. Bob Iger, who's the boss of Disney, is also here today. He's thrown Disney's weight behind this. He really thinks that uh, this might finally be the piece of hardware that gets us all using virtual reality. It's been around for ages, hasn't it? But it's never quite become that essential bit of kit that everybody has. Can Apple do it? And do enough people have three and a half thousand dollars to spare to make that happen? Interesting. So is the idea, Zoe, that, that it kind of, instead of having your head down on your phone all day or getting home and then putting a slightly bigger screen on, on, on your TV, you just wear this headset and instead of looking down at your phone, everything is there right in front of you. And then if you want to watch a film, you just hit play and it appears in front of you as well. Exactly right, exactly right. So it's definitely moving you away from that small device screen and into a much bigger environment. Apple's really good at having an ecosystem. You know, if you have an iPhone, you've probably got an Apple computer as well. It's hoping that the Apple Vision Pro will become part of that family to keep you completely hooked into Apple products. What I think is quite interesting is that virtual reality and augmented reality in the past has been massively targeted at gamers. We've seen lots of games, lots of kind of, you know, exciting roller coaster type experiences. Experiences. Apple really isn't saying that this is the device that's going to do that, although obviously you will be able to game on it as well. But it's very much aimed at communicating with your family. It's saying, you know, you can flip through your videos and your photos on your phone. You can see them at, a, at an enormous, uh, at a, you know, very uh, in a much bigger way than you would see them on your screen. You can interact with them. You can share them with other people who presumably also have the headset. Um, they are looking at a very different way of, I think, building a community and interacting with your friends. But the question is whether enough people will take the leap because, you know, the problem that VR has had in the past is that hardware is clunky. People just don't like to wear it for long periods of time. Can this more lightweight kind of ski goggle like device be something that people are happier to keep on their faces for a bit longer? You know, that's something that the whole industry has been struggling with. Yeah, we'll I have to see whether Apple uh, is able to make that work. And so just last week, we only got 30 seconds left but just uh, tell us or show us I suppose how are you going to control this thing so you put it on your head and there's a, a sort of dial that means that you can make the picture bigger or smaller depending on how immersed in your environment you want to be. You can speak commands, you can use gesture control as well. So it's very much about using your body and trying to make it as easy as possible to make this thing work. As we know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> uh, great stuff, Zoe. Thank you so much for that. Great to get immediate reaction uh, to that release there. It may or may not uh, be changing our lives uh, next year.